I'm Annie Palermo. I'm a physical therapist at the University of Miami, and I've been working on my PhD in the Department of Physical Therapy and at the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. For the last four years, I've been studying the impact that breathing has on people after they've had a spinal cord injury. Because of this, I wanted to make a video explaining why COVID-19 is dangerous for people that have had a spinal cord injury and ways that you can better prepare yourself. First, let's talk a little bit about breathing. The diaphragm is our biggest breathing muscle and it sits right at the base of our rib cage. It helps our ribs to expand in all directions, side to side and forward and back. We also use other muscles called accessory muscles that help us to breathe in and out. The more air we breathe in, the more our lungs expand. Unfortunately, a spinal cord injury can change how these muscles work and it can make breathing very difficult. People who have had a spinal cord injury tend to have difficulty breathing in and out, especially when it comes to coughing and sneezing. This change in muscle function is one of the reasons why the number one cause of death after a spinal cord injury is pneumonia or respiratory complications. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 tends to make itself at home in lung tissues and can cause pneumonia. So yes, people who have had a spinal cord injury are at risk to develop severe symptoms if they catch COVID-19. But there's something you can do about it to help yourself prepare. Just like you would train weak muscles in your arms or maybe in your legs, if you have access to them, you can train your weak breathing muscles. There are many studies that show that training your breathing muscles can help to prevent pneumonia. These studies aren't necessarily done in people who have had a spinal cord injury, but it gives us a place to start. There are studies that have been conducted with people that have a spinal cord injury, and they show that the more air you can breathe in, the easier it is for you to get air out. So the more air you get in, the stronger your cough. This is the device I use to train my breathing muscles. It's called a Pro 2. But if you don't have a Pro 2, don't worry. There's other options for you. Let me show you. With the Pro2 device, we get two interesting measures. We get the MIP and we get the power, or some people call it the SMIP. The MIP is the maximal inspiratory pressure, and that's this peak right here. It happens in the first two seconds of a really deep inhalation. And then we get the power, or the SMIP, which is your sustained maximal inspiratory pressure. And that's going to be this whole area under the curve. The SMIP is basically the amount of work you do in one breath. In 2002, Dr. Ann Breton completed a study where she looked at these scores in 27 patients in the ICU who were on ventilators. And she found that both the MIP and the SMIP were higher in people that were able to get off the ventilators. So now that you know a little bit more about breathing, let me tell you how you can train at home. If you still have your incentive spirometer from acute rehab, take it out and take deep breaths in through the mouthpiece. If that feels easy, try one of these resistance trainers. On this page, I have pictured the Ultra Breathe, the Threshold, 
and the power breathe. These trainers, along with others, have spring-loaded resistance. So as you get stronger, you can increase the resistance you have to breathe against. These are not the only trainers out there, but these can easily be found on Amazon or other retailing sites. However, if you don't have access to those resistance trainers or an incentive spirometer, you can use a straw. A straw provides a little bit of resistance on the way in and on the way out. And that resistance pushing air out through a straw can actually help to keep your lungs open a little bit longer. It gives something called PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. And that allows those air sacs in your lungs to stay open while you push air out. So you can take any straw, this is my reusable straw. You can plug your nose if possible to make sure that all the air you're breathing goes in and out through the straw, like this. Start with 10 breaths through the straw. If that seems easy, you can breathe in and out through the straw for two minutes. Try to work your way up to 10 minutes at a time. Your goal overall should be about 30 minutes a day. Take a look at this scale down here. This can help you to rate how difficult your breathing is. If it gets above a six, you're working too hard. So try to stay in that four to six range. If you're below a four, it's not really hard enough and your muscles won't really adapt. Your goals for training are to increase your MIP and SMIP to help your body to cough and to help prevent pneumonia. You should take deep breaths into your diaphragm to target that muscle for strengthening. Keep the difficulty score between four or six out of 10 so you know you're not working too hard, but that the training is hard enough to cause your muscle to adapt. And last, you wanna work up to about 30 minutes per day of training. For safety, don't train if you've recently had a full or partially collapsed lung, or if you have a history of breathing problems, please consult your physician. And start the exercises slowly if you experience shortness of breath or lightheadedness. You also should not train if you already have a fever. A fever is a sign that your body is working very hard to fight off the infection, and you don't want to challenge it more by making it difficult to breathe. Lastly, don't share your straw and be sure to wash it if you use it more than once. We want you to help us spread the word about respiratory muscle training. Anyone can benefit from respiratory muscle training, even if you don't have a spinal cord injury. So grab a straw and record your first 10 breaths. Be sure to post it on social media and tag us and use the hashtag C10Breathe10Challenge. Thanks for watching, stay safe at home, and keep breathing.